Hello and welcome to PlayStation Grenade. Shadow of the Colossus is an absolute masterpiece, but it can be easy to get a little stuck. To help out, here's a complete guide to all 16 of the Colossi. I'll let you know the differences between normal and hard modes, and the best strategy for time attack modes. Every battle is timestamped below, so if you're ready, let's do this. The first two Colossi are really training modes, but let's cover them all the same. Valus is the first beast we'll be culling, and it's pretty self-explanatory. Hop on his left foot and stab his calf to cause him to fall. As we climb up, you'll see a weak point on his right arm. That's only there for the hard mode. It's easier to fall down to this from his head, so we'll leave it there for the time being. Once you're on the beast's crown, charge your blade and get a few hits in. If you need to regen any stamina, hang back on the top of his spine and rest for a while, then return to the task at hand. If you fall off at any point, simply start the process again by hitting his weak spot on his left calf. But if you're in time attack mode, you can't afford to lose time, mounting the beast more than once. At this point, the normal version is complete, but those of us on hard will need to fall down Valus's back and onto his arm. Use the platform to fully regenerate your stamina, especially in time attack mode, as you'll need to take out this sigil in one sitting. Easy. Now on to the next one. Quadratus is next up, Colossus number 2, and will require your bow right away. Circle around to the back of the beast and you'll see the weak spots under its feet. Blast one of these to cause it to stumble. Go around to the leg that was shot and find fur to grab and begin to climb to the top. If you ever fall off, simply do that step again and continue. The sigil on his side is for the hard mode. That's going to be our last place of interest. We're going to start with the one which is over his butt. This is another which requires attention to your stamina meter. At any point you hear the clicking noise, try to find a safe place to stand and regenerate. Of course, in the story mode, if you ever have issues with stamina, search out those lizards across the land and pick up their tails after killing them. That will give you additional stamina. Once this sigil is successfully slaughtered, we can walk across the monster's back and repeat the formula on its head. He's a bit of a thrasher, so get to a safe place if you need recovery time. At this point on normal mode, you are done, but for hard mode, there is just one more sigil, which we've already seen on his side. Walk across his back to fully gain stamina, and then drop down into position and slay the beast. Colossus number 3, Gaius is probably going to cause a few issues. When the battle starts, I recommend spamming him full of arrows and hopefully hitting a weak area like the tramp stamp on his navel. We're staying still for a reason, we are moving him over here because we need to make room to use that metal plate behind him. Once he begins his attack animation, get your backside over to the metal ring opposite. We're trying to make him break his own armour by hitting this metal slab with a powerful sword hit so stay here as long as you dare, then jump or dive out of the way. Jumping back is the most reliable option in my eyes. Now with his armour in tatters, we can mount him and the best way to do this is to use his sword. Once his next attack comes in, dive away, then quickly run up his sword. This didn't go according to plan for me, but I'm keeping it in to show you that it's okay if the perfect plan goes wrong. Like always, remember how you got up here, as you'll need to do the same thing again should you fall off. We are going all the way up to his head and working down the attack zones. Use the top of his spine for rest and regen area for your stamina, and those on time attack mode don't risk anything. Back off and gain stamina whenever you need it. The harder the difficulty, the more thrashing about you'll need to cling on through, but keep chipping away and you'll get the job done. Next we're going for the hard mode sigil on his left elbow. Those on normal difficulty, go straight down his back and round to the front for your final stab fest. On time attack mode, it's important to have full stamina before dropping down to this area. We want this out of the way in a single visit if possible. If you're unsure you can get back up, just don't risk it. Climb to a safe spot and regen your stamina. With that complete, it's a simple drop to the stomach area, but I over pushed it and I fell off. But I wanted to keep this in to show you that it's not the end of the world. Stay calm, retrace your steps and get to the final weak point and go to town. Job done.
The fourth Colossus is horrible as it holds a random element which you cannot control in the slightest. You'll be waiting an awful lot in this fight. Meet Phaedra. She's an inquisitive little beast, which is her downfall. Jump on your horse and travel to any of the doors in the Teletubby house nearby. Use your arrows to gain her attention and then disappear into the building when she approaches. Resurface at one of the other doors, but do not let her see you. After what feels like forever, she will begin to look inside the doors and this is your moment to strike. Climb up her butt bone, for, for want of a better phrase, but be warned this can be a glitchy mess. If that doesn't work for you, grab the tassels on her head and climb there instead. Once on board, climb to her shoulders and regenerate your stamina. On normal mode, it's possible to kill the beast with only headshots, so you guys go straight up there and finish this, but those on hard mode, you need to weaken two areas first. On each of her shoulders are additional sigils to destroy. It's nothing too taxing though. Like usual, pay attention to your stamina, drop down, destroy, rinse and repeat. Now get back onto her shoulders and you'll see a vital point to trigger the final sigil. You know what to do. To finish the fight, climb on Phaedra's head and finish the job. Colossus number 5 is Avion. 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 And it's the same for normal and hard versions, only the number of sword stabs will change here. Get your backside over to the three platforms and stand on the middle one. Take out your bow and officially start the fight and get Avion's attention. As he swoops in, jump and grab his fur and hold on for dear life. Your job is to slowly make it to the end of each wing before taking out his tail. It isn't too complicated and extremely easy if you have an abundance of stamina. Wait until he flies straight and run to the end of the wing. Do as much damage as you can and then run straight across to the second wing. Once both wings are taken care of, make your way to the tail and finish the job. The sixth colossi is Barber, and the first thing we need to do is run away like the scared wimp we are. After about 30 seconds of running, you'll find this hiding spot. Stand on the plinth underneath, it's the perfect position. Once the beast has finished smashing everything in sight, he'll bend down to try and spot you. In future, we're going to climb on his lovely sexy beard, but the first thing we're going to do is get the additional hard mode sigil out of the way. It's on his hand. As he peers in, run out and get on top of his hand, charge your blade and wipe this out as quickly as possible. Doing this now means he won't shake as much so I recommend taking it out first. Next drop off and repeat the steps, but this time use that sexy beard to traverse up high. He's another thrasher so once again get yourself onto his spine to regen stamina before going into battle with his skull. With that out of the way, you will now need to drop down to the lower left side of his back. This can be quite unpleasant depending on how much thrashing he does, but if the worst comes to the worst and you fall off, go through the actions again and down this big bastard. Hydrus is Colossi number 7 and is the same on both normal and hard difficulties. As the battle starts, we are desperately trying to get its attention by swimming above it. Once his eyes turn red, you know the fight will ensue shortly. As Hydrus comes to the surface, try to get near without being electrocuted by the barbs. Do this well and the tail will push you out of the water long enough to grab hold of it. From here, it's a case of running up the tail when out of the water and holding on for dear life when under the waves. You'll finally catch up with one of those electric barbs. Either run in and attempt to hit the weak point to deactivate it immediately or keep your distance and wait for the electric shock to pass, then jump in and hit the pressure point. Both techniques are completely fine. Continue up the spine and take out the next pressure point on the electric barb. Rinse and repeat one more time until you make it to the head and then take out the beast. If you're doing swimmingly well, it's possible to do this in one phase, but don't worry if that doesn't happen, repeat all the steps. Get the beast's attention, position yourself ready to grab the tail, 
if you've taken out the electric barbs, this becomes even easier. Run up the spine where possible and finish the fight. Oh, but be careful of this bloody bobbing motion at the beast's head. I recommend holding R2 and crawling up to finish the fight. Fight number eight is with the Kurumori and is probably my favorite fight in the game. Once again, this battle is the same on normal and hard, although the poison projectiles on hard are extremely potent, so beware. As soon as the fight begins, whistle for your horse. We are trying to get the attention of the Kurumori, so it climbs up to this level, and whistling is the perfect way to do this. From here, throw yourself down to the ground. I tend to leap near walls and hold R2 to grab ledges on the way down, negating any damage I take. Once on the ground, you'll need to use your bow to take out two of the Kuro's legs before it hits you with its own attacks. If you get your shot on target, it will cancel his attacks, but if you miss, reposition quickly and try again. Then watch him fall. Depending on how far he falls will dictate how long this damage phase will last. That's why we whistled from the very top, so we could absolutely wreck him in the opening cycle. It's possible that the Kuro will crush you when rolling back to his feet, so I bailed out probably a little too early here. Better to be safe than sorry, I suppose. Now we run as far up the Colosseum as we dare and whistle for attention on the way. Try to give him enough time to climb higher, or once you're back on the ground, he'll be too close to fire arrow safely at, or worse still, like in my run, once he's fallen, the damage phase is far too short to do any decent damage. Luckily for me, I had time to do one more cycle and I didn't fluff my arrows too much. Job done. Fight number nine is with the Basaran and is the same on normal and hard difficulties. He'll fire buttloads of flaming projectiles at you. I'll try to stick around here so you can see one. There you go. We're going to use the environment to help expose his weaknesses. These geezer-like things are our friends. Position yourself quite far away from one of the geezers and hope that the Basaran walks over it. If done correctly, the pressure from the geezer will cause him to lose his balance. So then we run in and shoot arrows at the green pods on the two crooked legs causing him to fall onto his back. Run all the way round to the opposite side and clamber up his fur. Once near the top, the Basaran will regain his faculties and right himself. We want to be on his shell if possible, but beware, prepare for a very bumpy ride. Make your way to the head of the beast and not the backside like I did and absolutely smash his skull to pieces. Due to the flat angle, your stamina will pretty much not run out, so go crazy like the murderous dog you are and end the fight as quick as you can. Colossus number 10 is the Sand Snake Dirge, which is principally the same on normal and hard difficulties. As the fight begins, get on your horse and take out your bow. Once up to speed, hold triangle to maintain your velocity. Ride around in circles until Dirge begins to follow. As his eyes pop out of the sand, take aim with your bow and hit one of them with an arrow. This will cause Dirge to become blinded and smash straight into the nearest wall. Simply climb up his back and take out the first sigil before he comes back around. Once again, it's a case of rinse and repeat, but hopefully your horse isn't as inbred as mine and you can resaddle quickly. Hello! 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 Follow the same steps and remember to take out your sword to locate the last sigil. Pretty easy fight if your horse doesn't go into full dickhead mode. Colossus number 11 is the Hound, Celosia, and we're going to use a trick from the PS2 days to take a minute out of our time here. Fire is the only way to remove Celosia's armor, so as soon as possible, climb up onto one of the fire pits. The Colossus will charge at the pillar, causing a flaming stick to fall. By the way, if you jump at the right time, you won't lose your footing or suffer any damage. Our job now is to take that stick and reignite it. It's easier said than done as this mutt will wreck you at every chance it gets. 
Once the stick is on fire, use it to push back the Colossus to the edge of the cliff. As you can see, this is really time consuming, so we can glitch this to a degree. Run over to the cliff edge and take out your sword, then immediately pick the stick up again. This will skip that entire sequence and open up the sigil on Celosia's back. Depending on where you are after the cutscene, you could jump straight on its back and finish the fight quickly. If you find yourself out of position like I am, jump on the beast's back and start stabbing the sigil as often as you can. If you do get knocked off, don't worry, regen your stamina and jump straight back on again. The 12th Colossi is Pelagia, who is a water beast. This fight is the same on normal and hard difficulties. When you regain control of Wanda, swim to the back of the beast and climb up the mossy grass. Once on the crown of the beast, use these teeth-like things to direct the animal to any of the structures in the water. Once close enough, jump onto the structure and hide behind the central column, as the Colossus will attack. Sometimes it's instantly, sometimes it's after a short wait, so don't take the chance, get behind the pillar. Next, the beast will rear up and look for you. This is your chance to jump onto its belly and try to get three solid hits in. Be careful here, the hit detection can be quite terrible and only take off a morsel of life. The best thing you can do is line up as centrally as you can on the sigil. After that short window is complete, the beast resubmerges and the process starts again. Swim to the back, climb to the head, use the teeth to direct the beast, jump onto the structure, hide from the blast, leap onto the stomach, stab, stab, stab. Pretty boring, but you'll get there. Colossus number 13 is the Phalanx, and this is the same on normal and hard difficulties. As the scrap begins, take out your bow and attempt to puncture all three air sacs, keeping the beast in the air. I'm personally terrible with a bow, and was forced to jump on my horse to get close enough to hit all three sacs. Next, the Phalanx will lose altitude and dip its front wings into the ground. Our task is to grab hold of those wings. Easier said than done, but keep trying and you will get it. It's best to be on the back of the two wings, but any will do. Once the Phalanx is back in the air, run to the first sigil, but do not destroy it completely. Once any of the sigils are destroyed, the Phalanx regularly barrel rolls, so we want to prevent Star Fox from happening as long as possible. Now we'll run down the tail, utilising a jump to propel further, until you reach the second sigil. Same again, don't destroy it, we don't want to barrel roll. And then from here, travel down the tail again until you see the third sigil. This time, we can destroy it. Go for it. And like we said, the barrel rolls begin. You'll also notice that the other two sigils are now blocked by scales. The phalanx will knock you off and we start again. Shoot the three air sacs, climb aboard the wings, once in the air, find the closest sigil, destroy it, survive the barrel rolls, run down the tail to the second sigil and end the fight. Done and dusted. Xenobia is the 14th Colossus we'll be facing and once again, both normal and hard modes are the same. We first need to complete a jumping puzzle to knock off the armor. So as the fight begins, jump on the closest fallen pillar and follow this route. Once atop of these high pillars, we need interactions from Cenobia, who will try to knock us off. Remember to hold R2 in these moments. After the first hit, fire an arrow at the mutt, as sometimes he can get locked in an animation loop, and occasionally he even runs away and never returns. So it's quite important to shoot arrows at him every so often. As the pillar falls, jump to the next ledge. It's really that simple. I won't patronize you here. I'll speed up the clip just in case you want to see the full run.
Once this pillar falls, we can get into position to take out Zenobia's armor. Run around to this specific pillar and aggro the dog into smashing it to pieces. Now it's a case of getting on his back and wailing around. This can be done by jumping on his back, but it's better to let the now unprotected beast briefly knock itself out by running into the pillars you're stood on. Once you're in stab mode on his back, you may find that he knocks you off using ledges, but don't worry about this. Simply get up, get on one of the fallen pillars close by and wait for the idiot to knock himself out again. A surprisingly easy encounter. Colossus number 15 is probably the hardest fight in the game and it's due to the additional damage point in hard mode. Meet Argus. The additional point is where his heart is so if you're playing on normal you can skip the hardest part of the fight. Once the encounter begins, run over to this part of the map. There's a ledge that's slightly out of reach so we'll need this Colossus to stamp to boost us up to the next level. Whilst waiting, it's a great tactic to take out your bow and fire at Argus's weak points. That's his head and his heart, although the heart is only part of the hard mode. As he approaches and lifts his foot, time jumping away and being off the ground when his foot lands. This will negate any damage you take and the stumble animation too. Then quickly turn around and use the heightened ledge to jump to the next level. Inside here, take out your bow whilst waiting and keep attacking those weak points. As and when you see the next attack animation begin, dive to your left or right to avoid damage. Once again, this has helped us reach the next level on the structure. From here, we can run to either bridge. Once on top, go crazy with your bow. Here's where things can change slightly. Agus will smash down the bridge with his sword, but he often walks too far before doing so. If you choose to, you can use your bow to hit the vital point on his elbow, forcing him to drop his sword, and also revealing his hidden sigil, which we also need to destroy. Whatever your choice, your next job is to jump on top of the Colossus and begin to destroy his crown. He will thrash uncontrollably at times, so take regular stamina breaks on his shoulders. If you're playing on hard difficulty, we'll take the hardest element now, the additional sigil on Argus's heart. There's no easy way to do this, you'll need to drop down into position and hope the Colossus stays still for long enough to attack. You'll need to climb back up regularly to reset your stamina, and if you fall off, you can get back up using the same strategy from before, but you will still need Argus to give you a leg up to the first step. With those two elements out of the way, it's time to finish the fight. If you haven't removed your foe's sword yet, then make your way down his arm to hit the weak point until he drops it. Now fall to the ground and hope for the correct animation. Argus will attempt to stamp on you or hit you with his fist. It's the latter one that we want. As his fist flies towards you, dive out of the way, then quickly run into his palm and hold on for dear life. Eventually, he'll give you enough time to finish the fight. And finally, Malice, the last of the Colossi. This skirt-wearing, explosive-throwing brick house has a single difficult area which will cause issues, but we'll talk about that when we get there. The first part of the fight is all about closing the gap 
and surviving the bombs. The route is pretty obvious, moving from cover to cover and utilising underground passages. Even if you are hit, as long as you aren't blown off the map, it's pretty easy to get back on side. Once you've made it to the feet of the beast, slowly make your way up to his back. Nothing can hurt you here, it's all platforming. Now the action can begin, hit the vital point as much as you like to cause Malice to bring his hand around. From here, jump onto the hand and hold on. Try to manoeuvre yourself around the wrist area, which will allow you to run straight up his forearm to the next point. Take this opportunity to damage his bicep which is also a vital point. You'll notice a hand to jump to. This can be quite a tricky jump, but it's possible to just let go and balance on a piece of armour before jumping across to the hand. Once on Malice's hand, try to get around to the back of the hand for the hardest section of the fight. To give yourself more time, stab his hand regularly. Once in this position, take out your bow and hit his shoulder. There's a vital point there. This is easily the most pressure you will feel in any fight, so be ready to grab R2 and stay hold of the hand as it swings over to the shoulder. From here you can go straight to the head if you want to, but I recommend hitting the vital point a few times to bring down his health bar. Now it's time to end the game and make your way up to the head and prepare to be thrown around like you're in a mosh pit. But keep hold, watch your stamina and bring it home. A few stabs later, this journey is all over. That's it, all 16 colossi, or colossuses if you prefer, done and dusted. Whew, well played. I do hope this was useful to you and your journey through such a bloody great game. If you have any tips for anyone, please put them in the comments below and let's find ways to optimise each fight. I'm Adam from PlayStation Grenade. This has been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for your time. I'll see you soon.